one for me would be home is where the heart is. Growing up in this really amazing family, a big Armenian family, I'm the eldest of five children and we're all very close. I expected I would go, go to law school and then potentially be a judge. That was sort of what I thought since I was probably about nine. First day of university, I sat in on my political science class. It was brutally boring and I thought, this is gonna be my future? Are you kidding me? I'm not doing this, this is insane. I had taken a history class to fill part of my gap there and I had always loved history but I didn't necessarily think I'd major in it. I loved it. On the first day of school, one of the professors got up on the desk and reenacted a slave dance from Antebellum South, United States history and I switched my major by the end of the day because I thought that is interesting to me and the manner in which it was conveyed was fascinating to me. I ended up doing a couple of degrees in history, studied American history and then moved to Washington DC and life changed. I didn't end up uh, going to law school in the end and I'm, I'm good with that. I actually think, I'm actually excited that different paths have popped up by closing one door, at least at that point in life, choosing not to go. So chapter two would be, I call this uh, um, Tales from the Edge. Most of my career has been spent right up beside the world of politics, but not stepping into it formally. So in Washington, I, um, because I studied American history, I went down to be a, an intern, which should have been four months, and then I ended up spending years there. Started out as an intern for an organization called Presidential Classroom, a nonpartisan organization, but brought high school kids to Washington to spend one week behind the scenes in the political process. This idea that if you can flip the switch of somebody early enough in their life, to be engaged about, in this case, political service or public service or public life, it stays on for your life. And so that was the first and what would become many steps in my career of being engaged in that process but not stepping into the political realm. Here at Civic Action, we're very fiercely nonpartisan. We work very closely with political leaders of all stripes and all orders of government, but we don't get partisan. We don't get like we don't enter that arena. Chapter three, I call, I know you are, but what am I? I believe in that old adage, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I have had the great privilege, especially here at Civic Action, of working with a team of people that I would consider family. They're smart and they're passionate and they're warm and they're kind and they're generous and they work hard and it, it lifts us, right? You tend to rise to the bar that's set in front of you. When I think about that role of family, my two little girls that are the bookends of my life. Back in Washington, I was there for September 11th, and that was a zany time, as, as one can imagine. Everywhere, people were worried, but in particular, in New York and in Washington, stuff was just rabid. It was, it was, and it was before the time of cell phones, so you would try to call and say, everything's fine, I'm okay, pass the word along, but you couldn't even get out because the, the phones were so jammed. Condoleezza Rice um, was working at the time uh, in the White House, one of the security advisors. I read something recently where she, they grabbed her and said, you need to get into the bunker now. She was at the Pentagon. She wanted to not go originally because she wanted to understand what her role needed to be, in this case, as a leader in charge of the security file for the country. And they, gra they grabbed her, these big guys, and they said, you gotta go down. Like, we need to figure this out and we need to get you in the bunker. And she made two calls. The second was to the president, uh, George W. Bush at the time, who said, and she said, stay where you are, don't come back to Washington until we figure out what's happening. The second was to the president. The first was to her family. I'm okay, I'm going in the bunker, I'll call you when I can. That stayed with me, uh, because in those moments, what relationships, even though she has this big job, and the world is waiting for whatever's gonna come out of her decisions as a leader, she called home first. She called home first, right? So I think that speaks to the relationships that shape us, and in this case, the priority of family that she, that I, that so many others have. Chapter four is the world wasn't shaped by wallflowers. Especially being young women and young Armenian women, you know, our parents raised us to have a brain and then have a voice and use both. It was always going to be more important what came out of our mouth than the shade of lipstick that went atop it. And that um, has stayed with me both as a executive, as a woman in the world of business or government or whatever, um, and as a mom. The idea that you shouldn't just expect things to happen, but you have to go make it happen. 
and it's hard. We talk all the time about the confidence gap that, that people have, a lot of women have that as well, or the lack of representation in some corner boardrooms or um, many aspects of life. We haven't quite represented the population. Like here we are we're on the eighth floor in this in this wonderful building, if we go downstairs and grab a Starbucks right at the bottom of this building and look around the diversity of that spot, that corner, and then pop back up to the top boardrooms of this, it's very different. If you have an interest in a, an area, if you're passionate about something, you can't be a wallflower about it. You gotta somehow figure out how to be part of action that does something about it. I would say here we're civic action, not civic chit chat. Um, just studying the problem doesn't make it go away. And equally, having a thought in your head, but not being confident enough to get it out, it doesn't shape the world. To be written, I haven't figured out everything, and life will bring me whatever lessons it is I guess I'm supposed to learn. So this last chapter I'm intentionally leaving blank. Um, I think I am not one of those individuals, uh, though I have great admiration for those who can do it, who lay out their life plan. I can kind of go a year maybe in, in, in hopes, but I don't know much more than that. And so, um, and when I think back to some of those wonderful moments where life brought the most interesting lessons or exciting opportunities or adventures, none of them I could have foreseen.